Well, hello everybody. I'm Rebecca with r, &R Acres. Today I wanted to talk about feeding bees. I, that can be a controversial subject because some people don't like it, but I'm a proponent of giving them what they need so they can be stronger, so they can be healthier, so they have a strong body to fight off diseases and pests and parasites and all that. So during this time of year, it's a July, right after July 4th right here now in South Carolina. So we're in a dark. Uh, there's nothing really blooming right now. The bees can get pretty hungry. Our big honey flow has already stopped. So right now we're looking at leaving honey on the hives, which is always a great resource. Or if you're a beekeeper that likes to take the honey, sometimes you need to supplement or sometimes you have to look at how much nectar has flown during the honey flow. Sometimes high rains or droughts can really affect how much nectar there is for the bees to hunt and to gather and to bring into the hive. So if there's a shortage, you might want to think about supplementing for your bees. Now, bees need a couple of different things to be able to be strong and brood, rear brood. You have your proteins, your carbohydrates, and the lipids and sterols and vitamins tend to be in our pollens. I don't mind the bees hanging around me here. Hopefully I don't get stung as they're being pesty. So to start with the protein source. The protein is great for that muscle building. It helps form that hypopharyngeal gland, which is how they are gonna feed their larvae. So if you want strong bees growing to feed your new bees, you're gonna to need to supplement during times when there's nothing naturally. There's a couple different ways to feed a protein, which for the bees is their pollen. So for that, you can have a soft pollen patty. You can get these in bulk or you can get them between falling in between a couple of wax sheets. These you can put right onto the brood frames right above the brood mass. This one's kind of nice and squishy here. The bees can eat this up real easy. Now the trick is when you have your brood mass to put it directly on the frames right near the brood mass. So if I were to go into this hive I would look for my brood mass and put it right smack dab right in the center and then close my hive. Even if you put it a couple centimeters away, the bees will drastically eat it less. Here in South Carolina, we need to worry about the hive beetle problem. If you leave that nectar on these pollen patties on too long, you'll end up with a hive beetle infestation and that could take over your hive and you'll end up with a hot mess. And you don't wanna lose your hive by doing this. Another way to feed pollen, one of my favorite ways, is this dry pollen feed. This is a commercial supplement you can buy from any beekeeping catalog. You can read the reviews and make your choice what you think your bees will like the most. These are hard to recreate. Nature does what nature does and we try as commercial beekeepers and as bee supply catalog to produce what's best for the bees. Now a dry supplement like that I'll actually bring out and put into a feeder out in the middle of my apiary, not near a hive, but close enough where they can find it. That's when I use a feeder like this. This can fill it up with the powder. The powder is protected from the weather and the bees can come and go as they please, eating this all day long. I'd put this on a stand out in the middle of the field and let the bees come and go and take it as they wish. So this I found a very easy supplement. This has been out in my bee yard for couple years now and it probably looks like it. <laughs> so a good pollen supplement really help reinforce your bees to be strong and brood rearing and have good muscles and good hypopharyngeal glands that you're going to want and help provide those amino acids. At least the 10 essential amino acids that you're looking to feed your bees. You have to remember when they emerge some of them actually start eating that protein supplements or protein in the hive within a couple of hours after being emergent or some about 50 percent of your new workers will be eating within 12 hours been 42 to like 52 hours all of them are going to be eating protein and they're going to eat a lot of it the first 10 to 14 days when they start foraging they'll switch over to carbohydrates now for bees the carbohydrates is the nectar or honey that we love so much we know we like to steal it I get it, I love it, I love it myself, but sometimes they need some more, or if there wasn't enough for them, you might want to look into it. Now, the primary sugars that are in honey are your sucrose, fructose, and glucose. You can replace that, and some choose to in big commercial keepers, like the high fructose corn syrup. It's not a bad choice, 
is definitely an option. It doesn't have as great success with brood rearing as a sucrose supplement. Now a sucrose supplement is your just your table sugar. And something to remember with that high fructose corn syrup, it can go bad. If it goes bad, it's now toxic to your bees. So you don't want to accidentally feed something toxic to them. Now your basic table sugar, easy to find, cheap, you can get it at any grocery store. You can mix it up yourself really easy with some water. During this hot time of year where I have water evaporating easily, I do a one to one mix. So one pound of water to one pound of sugar or eight pounds of sugar to every gallon of water. One of the cheapest ways to feed the sugar water, to be honest, is this baggie right here. You take a Ziploc bag or any type of closing nice sealing bag, fill it full of liquid, poke a couple little holes in it. This air bubble here will start shrinking up and the water will start beating. Then I can just take off my hive tops I have my frames. I can pick up my feeder and put it right on the frames. When the bees want it, they can crawl up here and suck on it there and feel it and take it where they want to. You can protect it by putting your super back on with your inner cover and your outer cover. To me, this is the most inexpensive, easy way to feed the sugar water. You will not see me using any Boardman or entrance style feeders because I really think that promotes robbing. Now, I don't like using plastic and just throwing it away. So if you're not for the plastic piece, if you want something more permanent, there's a couple or more options. Now take this apart here. Take this down here, we'll let the girls have at it down here. Another type of feeder is this frame style feeder. It gets filled up with sugar water, it'll have baffles in it, or you can put wine corks in it, or pine needles, some kind of natural thing. Bees will drown, so you need something for, for flotation. You take this and you put it in your hive. Easy, right? Something I want you to think about is winter time. In order to refill this, you have to take everything open, your brood mass will be right here, and you have to refill this without spilling any water on these bees. They're already chilled. So be careful, please, if you choose to use this feeder over the winter. An option so that you don't have to do that would be a top mount feeder. There's a few different styles. This one has the solid wells with the screens in the middle. I like this one. Some have baffles. What I have found is that sometimes the weight of the bees all getting on there to eat in a hurry can sometimes weigh the baffles down too much. You can reinforce those baffles with wine corks. But this fits right on top and the bees can come up and eat your sugar water which is riding right in here. This one, your inner cover and your outer cover will go right on top. Easy for you to access and get to and refill without disturbing your brood nest. These can get a bit pricey though, so sometimes these are a little odd to use. A less expensive version for that, put your inner cover back on, there we go. Use a bucket style feeder. You put your sugar water in here and it has these little holes here for the bees to come and feed off of. Yes girls, I know everything smells sweet around here. Uh, <laughs> you fill it up, snap it, over it goes. Now most recommendations are to cover that again with your supers. That way it won't evaporate so fast and there's less chances for robbing that would occur and fighting and all that stuff going on. So you'd cover it completely and put your hive cover back on. When you want to refill, there it is ready to go. So this one's pretty easy as well. A lot of the commercial beekeepers though you won't find them doing all that. So you'll, you'll find is they won't have these inner covers and outer covers. They tend to use the migratory covers. Now this is one migratory cover and I've drilled a hole through it that is about the same size as the hole in my bucket feeder. 
So this one would slide right on top. I'd fill up my bucket feeder, flip it right over. And I would do this for all my beehives down the line. Easy to fill, easy to clean, and ready to go. Then, these are all internal, in the hive style feeders where you can provide a feed source to each and every hive. This is great, especially for your weaker hives. <laughs> you got bees on you. <laughs> She's just curious. <laughs> um, for your weaker hives, because sometimes when you do an external feeder, only the strong hives get there. So this is great for one-on-one -on -one hives. If you're looking for an external feeder where you can feed a whole bunch of hives at once, one of my favorite cheap, easy ways to go is a five gallon bucket. I fill it with my sugar water concentration and then I put something in it so the bees won't drown. This one I filled this morning with sticks and pine needles and sugar water and they've drunk it all down. This one I filled up about 20 minutes ago and they're starting to find it and I use my favorite wine corks so they won't drown and they can all stand on it and find what they want to do and they're all drinking away already at it. So they're ready to go. <laughs> well, that's my little spiel about feeding bees. I hope you take the time to realize and find out what works best for you. And then keep in mind, a well-fed population will be stronger. It'll be more resistant to disease and pests and can provide up to 38% more honey yield for you because when the honey flow comes, they have everything they need to produce well. So when you're looking through your hives and they look a little light, or perhaps they're not building up wax like they should, or maybe the queen looks like she's dropping off laying, but the population doesn't seem that big, they think that she should be laying more, it could be that they're getting hungry. So think about supplementing the feed with what options you think are best for you. If you like this video, please like and share. Uh, feel free to send me any comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Again, Rebecca with R&R &R Acres.